Ja, ja. We made it to the number 11. <laughs> I didn't like yesterday. That three upon time, you know, that um, it could be three times that comes upon to make a message. <laughs> three times a charm. Yeah, three times a charm. So three times a charm that creates the 11. 11 is the charm because it's the first of the mastery numbers, so it must be quite charming. I'm having a little fruit punch. And this is like a spritzer, so it's very intense. And it's... Um, Ginger punch. Ginger. Jays. Um, ginger punch. And uh, it's very explosive. <coughs> it's uh, infused with THC, so. It's very intense. I highly recommend that for someone that has a cold coming on. Like say you're a smoker. And you know a cold's coming on, but you keep smoking. Well, that's just craziness. Yeah, it's like having a high-end... Well, I can't say the spritz portion of it is what carries the medicinal edge, you know? So it's a... Almost like having a uh, mixed drink. <laughs> okay, now that's the first time in a long time that I uh, got to laugh. <laughs> and it was like I popped something out of place. <laughs> okay, that's stupid. Harry, I'm totally relaxed. I said, okay, you finally find a moment that you can uh, find the ebb and flow <laughs> what you're going through and present it without harming yourself for Christ's sake so now I feel like I popped a rib again but it's not a rib it's all in the lung so they didn't give me a, you know they sent me home with a, uh, I don't know discharge papers and they're supposed to have instructions on what to do for your life but I guess in this circumstance <laughs> We know what they set me up for was to medicate myself until I can get through this, which is the most likely avenue approach, considering how painful it has been for me. But since it's embedding itself into my lungs, and these guys that did the bronchoscopy, <laughs> the more I think about what happened, it's like, good Lord. Now, it was a big black man. Big hands, big black knight. He was really friendly. Oh my god. He just warmed me up as soon as I saw his face. And all the people rushing around to get things done. He puts this little mask on me. And it barely fits. And it's letting out <laughs> medicine. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and he put, like, I don't know if he had put his arm down. <laughs> like that to get it on there so that none of it's lost. It goes into the patient. But it was after the procedure, and they said they did a wash. It was like a gas wash or something. Like that. It's very, uh, leaves a lot of, everything's moist. Everything's mucid, muc, like mu, mu, mucid in there. Anyways, um, he explained the way it opens up in two branches, and he goes off, and he has to clear out ways to to get to see anything. But he didn't, he only got to take a little bit of sample on what his eyes is revealed. Maybe I'll find out to, today. Yeah, because I should hear from that other doctor today. If not, I'm calling. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> I'm playing the Las Cruces. Oh, Manaville. Yeah, we'll get around to it tomorrow. It is tomorrow. <laughs> so, hush. Uh, and, uh, but anyways, they hit my tongue 
Well, first they r rubbed my lip all across my teeth. Messed up my lip for a long time. Now it's healing up. But they nicked my tongue with something that actually took a scoop out. <laughs> Not a scoop like that, but the depression is definitely there. And it that that the very front of my tongue on the top and it's a divot about that you know, about that big. It's a divot. And it felt like razor blades the next day I mentioned it. Then of course with medication and stuff like that you don't notice but that thinking that you had hurt your tongue or something. But now that I've come home <coughs> I don't know why I'm stopping out. Um I noticed it. So anyways, I took that that marijuana salve. And since I get dry mouth you know, breathe in and lay in there for so long, I don't know, mouth breather. Uh, I hit the divot with while well, it was dry with the ointment and it burned. And then all of a sudden it just feels better. <laughs> yeah. I like that stuff. I have to get some more. So they take me, send me home with this packet, but they don't give me any instructions or any, any, any kind of anticipatory um, problems. I mean, they should know, right? Is this their first time too? <laughs> so, uh, well, she had cautioned me, the nurse did, that I do need to work beyond my shallow breath. And it's at that point where you, you've got to kind of push beyond it a little bit. And keep trying to reach beyond it, because it's your lung. Take it back. And uh, that sort of attack is what put me into the hospital. But now that they've lavaged and everything. And they hit me up with um, two rounds of antibiotics, uh, intravenous antibiotics, before anything got started. And they did the thing on the nose for... Um, MRS in MRSA, you know, all that stuff. They were very clean. Everything was so perfect. But this weekend, I, I, when I tried to breathe past that, there was like a... And, oh, uh, Jeff was a witness because he's trying to take care of me and I'm sitting in the chair. And so we finally got a monitoring system <laughs> between us where he can hear in his office everything I'm doing. So if I choke and fall or cough or whatever, and all I have to do is speak into speak towards it, and he's right here. Now he's asleep, and it's going off in his room, but I think he has an off, uh, uh, he lowers the volume. Because, you know, this is not for baby use, you know. It's like the baby's off, the baby's somewhere else. <laughs> but anyways. So I, after I expressed a little bit, I was like, oh no, oh no, I can't do this, I can't do this. And like one big whack attack, this is before we got the monitor, he could hear it all the way from the other side of the house. All of a sudden, wow, wow, both lungs just went, ha, ha, ha. And then I just forced it right out of the lungs right there. And I held it and it was in my mouth, it was like, oh. And I coughed it up. So I spit it out. And it was like the end of one of the openings to another bronchial passage, you know. And then another pain, you know, coming on and trying to breathe through that one and relaxing. It was like there were three in one day. So it must have been for Saturday. Yeah, it wasn't yesterday, Saturday. So I hocked up three with blood and then finally I hocked up another one without and this is we're talking uh, whew, three it took so for the three that I, I took up it was it was the afternoon four hours give or take four five hours to do all that it's quite miserable but then I noticed that I was able to lay back a little bit. 
It's like then I noticed I was able to reach a little bit more. So I was taking over. This is what she was describing. Well, she didn't describe that. <laughs> I don't, don't know what you know book she read, but <laughs> tell the patient to try to breathe beyond his point so that he can take back what he's lost. And, and so then I realized that I'm just clearing out some of the stuff that they had done. So that wasn't really bright blood. No, it was dark blood. It was like the end of the blood vessel that had closed up finally from such an assault. Whatever. Because he did take sample. And uh, so finally the last one was this huge one. And it actually had, <laughs> this is disgusting. Who cares? Just listen. We have tracheal shape, you know, and we into the lung shape sort of shapes. And it was the shape of the branch of this one side. And it sort of ringed and it was in phlegm. It was just pure. And it has a nasty taste. Very sour, bitter, strong. I don't know how to describe it. Sour, sour. And uh, that was perfectly clear. So, and then I fell asleep. And uh, yeah, well, I asked Jeff if that was in the book. You know, did they give me some instructions on this? You know, because I'm not going to panic or anything, but I'm not going to lay on the side that is afflicted because, you know, I've been laying on this side, but now my hip is pinched and I'm in pain on my hip trying to even lay there. It's just, ah, it's like bruised. I'm, you know, after a full week. So, and voila, sitting position. Yeah, it's hard to sleep in the sitting position, but we have the shape of pillows put up against there and in the bed so that I could just sit up and sleep, fall asleep. Although I find that this nodule here wants to fuck with me. Like he's still playing, like I'm still here and I'm a baby and I'm growing and I'm going to be strong and live a long life. It's like, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> it's good to get online, if anything, to express. I should hope that someone else should experience something like that. <laughs> Not the only one. But I feel comforted that it was all lavaged, and, and then I have a greater sense of breath. I don't know if you can tell from my previous videos. And I should hope that you'll see a little bit of progression going on, which is the highlight of the whole thing, right? Yeah, there he was at his worst, and he stood up, and he did this, and he can get it. And it's, and I understand, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a hand and foot guy, you know, you know, where everybody has to do anything. But when I had no level of uh, dexterity to get across to do it, yeah, I had to stop. And there's so many things I had to stop. It just blows my mind. It does. It blows my mind how many things I just stopped. So here I pray for change and change comes. And it brought For both this Scorpio and with the Aquarius rising, Scorpio moon, some kind of locked in there. And with all the Plutonian and all the other things going on and Saturn wanting to play, there's so much of my, my life. That Capricorn, Jeff's Capricorn with the Scorpio moon. So I don't know how that connects us, but it certainly did. And uh, he has discovered he can cook. <laughs> I told you that cookbook is a magic book. Anybody that can do the Grange. There's such simple down-to-earth ingredients. You're going to have them in your cupboard. And if you don't, you do need to put them in your cupboard. <laughs> whatever it is that you're using. Freezer, cupboard, whatever. Refrigerator. But normal product. Certainly. Everyday product. So yeah, he, he fixed a really juicy chicken dish yesterday. 
And I had fixed it previously and wrote on the book, very juicy. <laughs> and I guess that caught his eye. But I failed to write in so many recipes from the past. I should have been writing in that book all along. Into the magic book. And commenting and saying, oh, that's zing, 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 zing. <laughs> this lady got it. <laughs> Yeah, well, they they all raised kids. They all lived to be, what, 98, 99 to 100. Because I looked them up. You know, they have the name and the address of where they're from. The Grange Cookbook. You have to find one in a thrift store. In their cookbook section. Look for a Grange. I guess you could order online. Yeah, I have them online. Huh. Can't be the only one. So I had a cracker, I had a saltine, an incredible thing. But the marijuana THC infused punch makes my tummy go rawr. <laughs> it's like, what? Do you want beans? <laughs> rawr. I really should have two straws up here. <laughs> the little cat has been quite a challenge for me in this situation. Where was the other way around with me and Redden? He watches, it. He watches over me, but... He wants to play games with my feet and get on the covers. He knows, he knows I'm kind of stuck there. He's sound asleep right now. <laughs> so spring has come really fast. The peach tree under the Vitex is beautiful. But the peach trees over there on the other side of the yard, they're diseased. Yeah, the blooms on them. I mean, they open, but they open like cups, like hard cups, with no color. And yet the bees are swarming all over them. So I don't know, maybe we'll get some cross-pollination enough this year to get some decent fruit, but they're the weirdest trees I've ever seen. Their first year, they produced nice blooms, and then they just went <coughs> with the other ones. So. That's not fun. It's no fun to set something in the ground and watch like five years go by and you go, yay! And same with my Nankin cherry. It's blooming, both of them are blooming, but I can see where one has lost a large branch. So rather than let that disease sit there, I have to cut it out. And I've cut back a lot of stock, which is going to have to regenerate. Yep. Sad, sad. Used to get so many cherries off of it. Even enough to make a jar of the cherry syrup. That's what I did. Hmm. Who knows? It's weird how times change. And, and time just flies right by. So what you're doing today is what you were doing 10 years ago, what you were doing. And next thing you know, you're the one that gets struck with it, where it's like, wait a minute, I was just doing that. And there it is, you know, 20 years later. And then you wonder, how? And where did it go? I mean, you know, it's in here. You've experienced it, but it's the same thing over and over and over. So the real change <laughs> comes beyond this. This expression, um, yeah, 2024, number six, fertility, family, nurturing. It's a healing number. Yeah, it has a lot to do with money. Anything that can expand outwardly and grow. Yeah, so that's the whole works. This has to leave. <laughs> it does. I've been speaking about it for a long time. But in numerology, it's always been upon me. 
Huh? And Jeff's always the next year after me. I'm kind of hearing things coming from over there. But it's the heater, the way it's shaking. <laughs> Sounds like someone's starting an engine. Anyways, um, I forget what I was talking about. Oh, the number six. Yeah, so when January 15 comes around, and with the current year, he enters the number six. But he's now in the number six. He always does that. But I stick with the, last, the year before. And I don't take on a new year until my birthday in November. So see how we're going like this? Constantly. Hmm. Yeah, it's really weird. But he, I think he would agree that uh, we've extended ourselves in the tomb of 1003 McPhee for far too long. And neither of us can accomplish because it wants to bear down on us. Yeah. Now, his concepts and my concepts are totally different. <laughs> Believe you me, I have no idea. <laughs> so whatever his reality is, I don't know, you'd have to ask him. But I know that um, lymphoma is curable if it's treated. <laughs> the medicated portion of it that little ride that you have to take, what, if to knock the patient's pride down, you know, or to wear them thin? I don't know. It should be an open door situation, you know, like that. We got it down. We'll give you another ting. <laughs> Why is it so difficult? So now today I'm playing, I hate to say the word, um, but I'm I'm playing this wait and then get to what? Nine o'clock in the morning and nine o'clock in the morning you still ain't called? Yeah. Ah. You know, I come out of inpatient, get my referral, but it depends on what she wrote on the referral. I guess I should I have a copy of it. I should read what she wrote on her referral. And uh to this guy whose office is in the farthest back of the building. <laughs> you know, and all his colleagues get to get all the way up to the front, the first one, and uh, gets the uh, courtyards with the um, sculptings and stuff like that. Of course, everybody gets artwork in the hallway. But it was a hallway that sloped. Poof. They even put him downhill. <laughs> Now I know better next time to park way over there. <laughs> downhill. And then I'll get right through your front. Right by the elevator. I don't even need to go near Miss Stacy in the front. <laughs> it's also confusing to me. And, uh... So anyways, I got through that episode. You know, with opening my lens up. And you can I think you can tell there's a big difference. Major difference. So I'm able to be more functional. Get up, walk outside, sit outside in the sun, go <laughs> Like, it's going to cook you. It's like, wow, it's hot. And I can't go out there to water, so I don't even put that in my focus, but I notice everything's being taken care of. And uh, so getting through that, but the next thing is sleeping. Because <laughs> I can't lay on my side anymore. Can't lay flat. Um, and sitting up is the only way. But then, even then, last night at that slope, it was hitting my shoulder like ting. So I guess that's when I knew I had to get up. Because if you just you can't bear it down on it, it's a murder scene. Get off of it. <laughs> get some spritza. Put some spritza in it. Well, until we can get to the chemo portion. I did get to manage to watch a patient testimony because I'm trying to search. I put lymphoma on my video. I put tags on my video. And they never show up, YouTube. What's wrong? Am I like, 
Am I so boxed away from the rest of the world that, oh, we don't even let his tags work anymore and he doesn't even know. <laughs> he doesn't even care. He puts those tags in there all the time, but they never work. This is very bizarre. So anyways, uh, it's because it's a business. I know it's, uh, everybody's a business platform. I'm sure there must be other places out there that are more of a, you know, it's just a vlog. You know? Of course it has pertinence in regards to <laughs> the beast, the fox, prophet, and the dragon. <laughs> And the 666 and the whole nature of it. Yeah, what brought me here to this point, you know, this whole experience. This whole uh, revelation, you know, with Gabriel. And for what assignment? I don't know. <laughs> that was it? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. You know, I've, I've put out enough out there that people should be in shock. People should be saying, <laughs> there's no way that this guy is the son of perdition, so we should put him on a stage. Give him a stage. But it doesn't happen because in this world they expect you to be your own uh, production crew. Production thing and, and all of that. Presentation and selling something. Like What's it called again? <laughs> Ginger Punch. This is funny with the J's. Ginger. Well, my kitty cat's a ginger. Did I wake you up? Good. I don't know what time it is. Anyway, so... You know, I don't like the thief. I don't like the one with the zero. And, and uh, I guess I did that backwards. <laughs> Be over here. And then there's a, that's a 10 in your perspective. And, uh, excuse me. Um, but that 11, you know, three, three, three times, which is the three times of charm, that charm pun the day. Well, it creates an altar of three ones, but it also creates the three in its expression through a thief, because it was the ten number ten day. So the day itself is going to steal any notion or idea or uh, notion, whatever. I mean, everything I thought y of yesterday to get to today, if I if I had a crystal ball, shit, I wouldn't know. That felt good. That felt good. Yeah, so, anyways, today, the three time charm is upon a charm. Upon the 11, the 11. So the eleven and eleven exist itself in, in its in its own right as a mastery. Yeah. And it's a door, as it is a foundation. It would be the four winds, as it would be the four living creatures, as they are the architects of all living things. They're the directions. You're born with directions. <laughs> I remember long ago the turmoil that I was in and, and when when I was discovering the destruction and destruction upon the planet by um, such means like BP oil and all that other nonsense and radioactive you know all the radioactive uh, nuclear power sites and uh, most don't speak of it, you know. Three Mile Island and things like that. But that bore on me like it was such a I, I can't even explain it. It was this child couldn't cope. 
I just couldn't cope. I cried out. I, I was in such anguish. I, could, I didn't even want to face the world in such anguish that of what they had done. They have done. They keep doing. I remember that. I remember that so distinctly. Oh, I should blow my nose. Oh, all prepared. Okay, I cleared my nose. <laughs> I had to. And uh, so the 1111, this is an 1111. So I feel so much better. I would have never felt from yesterday. Because that thief was presenting itself and I just couldn't, uh, couldn't cope with anything. Yeah. But Jeff is learning that he can cook, so that's good. He's going to have his own experiences with the magic cookbook. And then it's just a matter of finding the ones and you start to notice which ones are easier and faster and wiser and, you know, makes a difference as to what you're going to fix, you know. Like, I should hope he doesn't cook me anything with chili. You know, like chili and pork. <laughs> What are you doing? Are you the devil? Yeah, I have a devil list <laughs> of all the things that crack me up. <laughs> Never mind. So, so sad about the, the, the peaches, but that's no big deal. At least the one peach tree will be doing something fine. And then we'll see what happens to the pears. Maybe this year I'll get some pear. And then uh, they're usually early. That's why I'm surprised they're not opening yet. The pears are usually early. Something's wrong. I have to get my little butt out there and find out. <laughs> yeah. So. The 1111, that's his two sons, you know, mirror, mirror. It says two sons. It's the twin parallel soul body situation, you know, like parallel. And when I see the 11, 11, 11 through digital means, it says rows of corn and eyes between them for those with ears to hear. Corn, yeah, ears, and eyes to see. Yeah. So that eclipse is coming up on the 4-8. I would hope that I would have some better news than, than just the medicated news. <laughs> I was very, very worried yesterday that the, um, the morphine is taking me down, <laughs> down, down. <laughs> but then I, 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 I pulled my, I pulled myself through an eight-hour morphine pill, and I could take another one, you know, eight to twelve hours, and uh, that would be more. But I'm running twelve, twelve, and so I get to the twelve-hour mark, and then I said no. So then I guess I got asked two hours before I realized that the pain was coming on strong and didn't make no difference that I have to kill the pain so I'm going to take the morphine and knock that out without too much nausea that's what I have to watch out for is the nausea because the morphine makes me feel like it's ooh. <laughs> oh, not fun I don't know why anybody likes that. I remember my first injectable morphine long ago, and it dropped me out, but I was like, well, made me sick. And I didn't like it. it wasn't, sure, it took away my pancreatitis pain for the moment, enough that I didn't die. Thank God. 
there's been things going on with me that doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm still at the same hospital that I ever was that has all the records. Yeah, because I was inpatient there before for pancreatitis. It's like a spasm. It's like a hiccup in the in the lung. It's the uh, <laughs> it's the uh, lip node trying to secure itself in there. Um, so when I had that huge lump right here, because he went in and <laughs> he took like six core samples, he diffused the whole lump system so that it opened itself up. Yeah. Thank God. So uh, that was nice. But I realized that a lot of the swelling portions are not, it's not muscle pushing out of my chest. <laughs> no, it's all that material. So it's in all of them, especially like right here I have a lump. So it's like, hey, crazy. We need to zap it. Zap it today. Do it. <laughs> you know? I don't know. I, so I watched a video on a testimony that was going through a relapse on um, her cancer. And so she had to go through chemo again. She just kind of said, went in there and they wired her up. And she just took a Jerry's chair and her own blanket and everything, things to comfort her. And I guess it just takes long hours. And you finally get through the process of him drawing through bags or whatever. And then she drove herself there. I can't believe it. So I don't know how she got home, but uh, that doesn't answer any questions for me. <laughs> no, 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 no. So I have to face it in a different way. I mean, all of our facilities ask that you don't record inside of the facilities. Yeah, no recording. Yeah, like in the ORs and all the different procedural rooms and in the little hospital up there in El Paso. No recording in the hospital. The hospital is being recorded. <laughs> There's no recorded required. Required. I guess people, family members come in and they just want to record the room. And But uh, it's like, no. <laughs> it's not a hotel. I am very impressed with those people, and I do need to write them a review because they sent me that whole thing, you know, to take a survey, and that's top notch. Bam, 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 bam. But you know, if they in the future want to hear from someone, I told Jeff he would probably get a phone call, but I think he was interrupted on that one. Yeah, they're so fast. Teleprompter and people. Yeah, get to it. So now, I think it's a great presentation. I mean, how incredible that there's an 1111 event now. And uh, as a doorway. And it's through the, the expression of the one, L even, L even is 11. So it's L and L. L even, L even. Even Stephen. <laughs> even Stephen would be 12. So 11, 11. But tomorrow there's number five. How is that going to drop? It's the, so the three times, three times eight this time. Three time charmer upon the 12th makes it five. I mean, makes, well, makes the 14, which makes the 5. Because yeah. it's an 11. It's presenting itself. So the mirror, mirror, the charm is the mirror. It's like picking up something that has such a reflection. 
then it, would, it, gives, it gives back that reflection back to you. So, five is the hand. that returns us to that which we have in our hand, to repent. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no free will until those trumpets blow. <laughs> but there's choices, so we have the right and left. And we should know that. We should know our right and left. Our directions, you know, we got the four winds. They're giving us directions. We should learn these things. When we grow up as a child, and then we let go. What do we let go? We let the industrial complex tell us what's right or right or left, or how to circle around, and and then to display display themselves in commodity. <laughs> yeah, in commodity itself. It's a possession. Yeah being played like that. <laughs> so we had a reprieve with a little bit of rain. We did. And now it just seems to be cold. That's cool. I'm not talking very much. Yeah, not too much. The five tomorrow. The hand. Well, that's me taking my hand and going, pulling that brake. Excuse me, we need an appointment right now. There is no way we're going another day. Because that's tomorrow. <laughs> that's where Las Cruces is like manana effect. Everybody gets the mananas. It's like, no manana. I turned this paperwork in on Thursday. And I expected to hear someone from by Friday and no one called. It's like, it, well, they had to gather a lot of information, right? Get it all in. All the results. So they could stage it, I guess. But they did. They staged it. Stage two. That's what they needed. I don't know. Politics. Politics and money. You know, it's Paul lit a call. And he was always a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. And he was always going to steal it. As he was a tax collector. You know. As he was a publican. As he was a publisher. Mm -hmm. by his letters alone. It exists. So, it's amazing how we have letters of Paul to the churches, but we don't really get any churches sending out letters to Paul. Where are those? <laughs> you know it was usurped by the Roman Catholic. The, by Rome itself, it became itself. And yet it was persecuted for a long time until it was finally just, it, it, in, it, it consumed itself from within. Sure did, and rose up. What? Well, truly, what they consider a great monarchy. Something that they were willing to sacrifice all others to achieve and to be shut down and then to be given birth again, life, you know, the whole Roman Catholic. But it's still, it's all a heretic of itself when it had nothing to do, <laughs> nothing to do with the Lord, you know, except for it does have everything to do with the Christ, for which it's held which is the dragon. Yeah, it's the dragon. So <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's in its own right to stand righteous to the very end. And uh, 
Yeah, you'll just be given your everlasting life. You will have become the servant of Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, that was something. I highly recommend it. It's a... Um, I can't see nothing with no glasses. It's 4.34 in the morning. And I've been talking for 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's no wonder my tags don't work. <laughs> they probably only work for the short videos. They do. Okay, well, we'll have to put that on our list. Yeah. <coughs> now, this is, uh, we're still in Pisces. Yeah, I haven't really given it much thought. You know, I see 316 all the time on the digital clock. 316, 316, you know, it'll show up. And I always think of, you know, he who believeth in me shall have everlasting life. And it is, it's perdition. Because it's 316s. Yeah. Or three score and six. So it's built in. And of course it holds the trisomy and it holds this in seven seven. Which I think is the face of Enoch in the child. Yeah, that's why he could look upon anybody and uh, they would feel judged. Yeah, they would feel so judged. And uh, so I guess as time went on, Nick would appear less and less and less until he was taken out. Yeah. But what he left behind is so severe that it's hard for me to grasp. So I don't even try to. I mean, I've listened to it, and it's very, very enthralling. But to be apportioned to it, oh my God. To allow something like that to become manifest, we have that now. <laughs> we don't need that. We don't need that. We need revelation. Yeah. Thank you, Enoch. <laughs> Go. You know, we all feel judged here. <laughs> now we need uh, revelation. Which is the revealing, you know. I'm gonna have me another cracker. I might even belch. So now the whole idea is to keep it up, you know, to keep control of sugar. Mm -hmm. No sweets. None of that. Nothing that holds a lot of sugar. Because that's feeding cancer. The growth. Yeah, that's where, that's how the growth takes it. So, it'll be juices and then, you know, fruits or fruit based stuff and hopefully fresh fruits soon that'll show up because I remember when I was getting my teeth fixed there was one summer I lived off of peaches it seemed like I had to make a peach recipe for every night because there was so many peaches and they were going to just go rot I guess that's the way of this world. This is the way of this ground here. That it gives out in cycles. And it takes back and it gives away. And it's, the cycles change until you bring it back. Yeah. Planting fresh peach trees. 
starting all over. But I know I need to leave. But wherever I go, I won't know anything about it. So I'm just waiting for this whole whole shift that will take place. Yeah, that's why I'm in the Rockies. That's, that's what this is. Yeah. And all of our storm fronts just always skirt right between us. We always have the strangest weather. Never too bad, never too good. <laughs> and uh, powerful, and yet dispersed enough that it can handle it, because I've seen the worst here. I've seen pictures where Las Cruces was completely flooded in some sometime during the 30s, completely destroyed. People's walls of their houses just went because <laughs> it's like mud brick, you know, and just fell. And everything was just three, four, five feet in Rio Grande, and that's what this was—was was the Rio Grande. Yeah, but this was a mucky end. Yeah, it didn't have a very good ending here. But this is where the railroad station is. All the industrial stuff was going on, so this this is the depletion zone, I guess, in the beginning. Yeah. And now they're turning everything into pecan fields. Yeah. That takes a lot of water. It sure is beautiful down there, where they've been growing them for like 50 years. The trees are massive, and you can drive for miles under the canopy of the trees. Yeah. Ooh, that cracker kicked my butt. <laughs> So, too bad this isn't interactive. It's already probably been an hour now. I should stop it. Okay. Um, touching base. That's all. It's a number 1111. And there's so much to explore in that right there. So, have fun. Bye.